All right, let's see what we can do tonight. This was a previous topic I did before, and I'm very excited to jump back into this topic. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Pretty pink high heels. I just saw you come in. Thank you. Kristen Yates, Margo Sackton. Hey, got all kinds of people coming in. This topic, this topic is one I covered a couple of weeks ago, and it was so so big. The response was so huge. You don't want to miss this one. I'm going to do it again tonight. I'm going to show you everything I talked about, but more. Go in even more depth tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about how to turn a boyfriend into a husband. Because that's what, that's what everyone wants to know, right? How do you go from a boyfriend who's not committed to a deep, committed, intimate, loving relationship that you can advance into a marriage? How do you do it? I've got five key steps. Five key step plus three bonus green flags that shows you when you should then commit. Because that's two sides of the coin, right? Both. I'm going to show you five steps plus three green flags. We're going to do that tonight. Yes, I did this topic a couple weeks ago. I've got way more to add. The, the explosion last time was so big. We've got to cover this topic again because there's just there was no way to cram this into a one hour. So I'm going to be here for one hour tonight. I'll have you done. I know it's 4th of July for us Americans. You'll be done by the time, by the time, by the, time the fireworks come. <laughs> Just say that. I'm already thinking about the fireworks tonight. It's exciting. Okay, tonight. Here's this thing. Here's the thing. Before we start, because I've got over here, I've got a whole checklist over on my side, my side screen of five things I want to talk to you about tonight about how to take a relationship from not committed into committed and how to have those conversations, the things you need to say, the questions you need to ask. Yes, some of them are scary, but I'm going to get you through that. And then the three green flags that say you need to commit to this man now because he's ready to commit to you. I'm going to show you those pieces. Before I do, someone just liked it, double tap that screen. Just double tap it. It hits a like and it brings people in. The higher this number goes, the more people come in. And the reason you want that is because down here, ask me questions. This is not a one-way street. Ask me these questions. See those likes? That's awesome. Thank you. Ask me questions down here all night long. All the questions you've been too afraid to ask, all the questions that you have been waiting to get into like a good therapist to ask, anyone you wanted to ask a men's coach, Ask me any of those questions about relationships, intimacy, connection, bonding, men, women, however it works. Ask me those questions down here and I will answer those questions because I love them. I love these questions. So two-way street tonight, not just me talking at you. Okay, let's jump right into this. I'm looking over here at my five points. Number one is excellent. Number two is going to get, no, number two is going to scare some people. Number three, though, is going to be, it's going to blow the doors off. Okay, number one, number one, question number one. Statement number one, I should say. Step number one, to turn a boyfriend into a husband. Number two, number one, check your attachment. Check your attachment to bulletproof your relationship. This is what I tell people when they come in and they say, I want to bulletproof my relationship. I don't want to have a divorce. I don't want to have an affair. I don't want landmines in my relationship. How do I make sure it 100% is safe and keeps growing? And I say, check your attachment first. Check on both sides, your attachment style, his attachment style, who's secure, who is not. What is attachment? Attachment is the way you give and receive love with another human being. You learn this, either you learn that you can open and connect with people and cooperate with people and be open and honest and trusting and that they will meet your needs and then you can meet their needs or you learn that people will act upon you. Parents teach you this. They will act upon you. They will hurt you. They will scare you. They will judge you. You have to please them to try to get your needs met or they won't need, meet your needs at all and you have to fight to get your needs met. This is attachment and these lessons we learn early on carry forward into our adult relationships. That's why I teach people how to fix these because if you go into a relationship with a guy and he is just there to try to get his needs met, he's going to push your buttons, try to make you not happy, try to make you feel certain things so that you will then return those feelings to him and help him feel a certain kind of way. That right there, that right there is why so much commitment does not happen. It's because men are in relationships afraid of commitment and afraid of connecting. If he has those attachment issues, he's not going to commit. He's not going to commit. He's either going to be a nice guy who's just there to make you feel good but is afraid to commit because he's afraid he's going to screw it up and he's an imposter deep down and he's going to do nice things and then burn, build it up into resentment when you don't return those nice things the way he thinks you should or he's an avoidant who's just going to keep running, running, running and keep pulling you along to try to keep you interested. That right there, fix your attachment. And if you have attachment issues, I can show you how to fix that too. I'm going to stop, pause, grab some of these questions, but I'm going to go on to number two and number two is a big one. I don't want to miss TikToker says, are you a psychologist? Nope. That is a license. That is a specific licensure with a specific um, 
PhD. Nope, I was a licensed psychotherapist, uh, marriage and family therapist, actually, but it's just so constricting. You can only practice in one unit, one state of the 50 United States and no countries and no coaching, no nothing. So I terminated that license so I could go international with this attachment teaching. So now I teach internationally. I teach all over the world. Nam Hatsa says he gave me a ring and set a date. Now he's getting nervous. Yep. So that happens a lot. Um, for guys who have attachment issues, usually anxious attachment style, they will give you the ring and they're like, fine, fine, it's gonna be great. And they'll give it to you and then they are terrified of actually going through with it. Um, very common with anxious attachment style. Very, very common. Stacey Gardarama, how do you know when your boyfriend is cheating? Ooh, I've done so many topics on this. Um, so many discussions on this. The biggest thing you can do to check and prevent cheating is to build actual emotional intimacy where you are open and connected with each other, sharing needs, real needs, and he's vulnerable with you, and he's talking about his concerns and his life and not having you solve them, but he's running solutions by you. He's using you as an, a good advisor, using you in the best way, I mean, as an advisor, as a second set of eyes on his life. He's open with you. And he's like, hey, here's what's going on. What do you think about this solution? Hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing, but before I do that, what do you think about this? If he's open like that, then he's pretty healthy. If he's like locked and guarded and you don't know about much about in his life, if there's, I should say this, if there's even significant room to really think he could be cheating and you can't bring up the conversation, and if you do, you get pushed down and laughed at and all of that, like, even if there's just an open door for it, it can turn into cheating later on down the line. So really, really big piece to talk about. What about avoidant attachment? Tarot Square asks. Yes, avoidant attachment runs away, runs away, runs away and is afraid. Yes, avoidant attachment. Exactly. Um, Chelsea Bond, 007, good name. Um, that's a, avoidant attachment will almost never commit. And if they do, it's an arm's length. They control the terms. They control everything. And they are not going to get super intimate and super connected with you kind of thing. Stacey Gardarama, what if you're struggling to trust? Yes, sometimes that can be the case. Um, especially if you're afraid he's cheating, but he's actively like taking care of emotional intimacy and building that and you're still afraid. That can in turn come around to your... Um, your anxious attachment style or, or avoidant attachment style it can come around to those avoidant pieces. If you don't know how to build trust and you don't know how to establish trust with somebody and don't know when to trust them, attachment is the answer. And that's what I teach. It's all over my, my TikTok. It's all over my YouTube. I've written two books on it. I coach internationally. I've got a community for it. I have everything for attachment because it's, it's the foundation. Cupcake mom. Hi, Adam. Hey, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Shakira Knightley. The real Shakira Knightley says, my boyfriend of two years has had the ring the first few weeks of us dating. Don't know why he told me about it. So you've been together for two years, but he's been holding the ring since the very first couple weeks. Is he just dangling it in front of you to try to make you perform? Is like, that's my big question. Is he like, hey, look what you can get if you're good enough? Like I, I, there, there's this thing, um, there's this thing called love bombing that men with avoid and women with avoidant attachment ha have that it's, it's narcissistic. It's not narcissistic personality disorder, but it's a narcissistic trait where they saturate you at the beginning with all kinds of love and affection. And, oh, hey, baby, I picked out a ring and I've only known you for a few weeks, but I'm so sure. And then they saturate you at the beginning. And then they back off and let you chase them. And they only stop and give you more love and affection when you start wearing out and you're like, man, I don't want to do this chase anymore. They're like, oh, but I love you so. And they come back and it keeps and it keeps running like that. That's the attachment. That's the avoidance cycle. Um, Shakira, yeah, why is he taking so long? Um, I will talk tonight. I'm going to talk real quick about some of that. I'm going to talk really quick about that. Uh, okay, these are great questions. Great questions. I feel like I can't get through them fast enough. I can't get him comfortable enough to move in. That is a big piece. Let's talk about that tonight. Um, all the things I'm teaching you tonight about how to turn a boyfriend into a husband, it's going to do it. So we did number one, right? Bulletproof your relationship by checking for attachment on both sides. I have a book that will help you do this. It's called Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith. The Kindle version is $5. It shows you everything about attachment on both sides and all the steps to fix it. It's five bucks, Adam Lane Smith, Slaying Your Fear. There's a link in my bio in the link tree. It's the book's in there. I've also got 130 YouTube guides over on YouTube free that you can check out for all kinds of attachment. I have one over there called How to Bulletproof Your Marriage Against Affairs and Divorce. Great resources over there. All of that, perfect. That'll do it for you. Um, 
How to build emotional intimacy when he's super avoidant. That's exactly the thing is avoidance is avoiding intimacy. That you are trying to build the very thing that their attachment style is built to avoid. Because avoidance, uh, intimacy, vulnerability is scary, terrifying. They're afraid that you are going, someone, anybody is going to hurt them. If they open up so they can't connect, they can't commit, they can't give responsibilities, nothing. Um, nothing. They must fix their attachment style. They absolutely must fix their attachment. And, and you can. You can 100 fix from avoidant or anxious to secure or disorganized even. You can fix it. That's my whole job. Daniela Comp, are the reasons why men have affairs different than the women? Why, reason why women cheat? Um, no. No. The way that they cheat often is different. The way that they cheat is often different. But the reasons that men and women cheat is because they have these attachment issues. So they say, I can never connect to anybody. I can't open up. I can't bond. I can't cooperate with someone. So I must act upon other people and get them to give me the good feelings I'm looking for. So when your relationship is going, 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 eventually the feelings get rocky. They, they get tough. It, it's difficult. You go through difficult periods together. Eventually that hits a point where they say, I am not feeling good and I resent this person because I have done all the button pushing I know how to push and they are not doing what I want. So there must be something wrong and I'm mad at this person. But hey, this other person gave me a really good temporary feeling. I must be meant to be with this other person. And they and because they're just acting upon people and getting feelings and feelings are the entirety of their relationship. That right there is the problem. That is why people have affairs. Then they go out, they use substances and it lowers their inhibitions or they get deeper immersed with that person, start bonding with that person. They complain to that person about you and that person makes them feel better. So then they start bonding with that person really well. And then the feelings just start transferring and then they go to that person then they cheat on that person too. It, it, that, that's why people cheat. That is why people cheat. They are acting upon people instead of working with people. If they worked with people, then the emotional intimacy would be high. Their needs would get met. None of this would be a problem. That's emotional intimacy. That's why I say bulletproof your relationship by working on your attachment, which then builds, uh, builds the ability to connect like this and have one-to-one -one person to person conversations. Talk about your needs, share your concerns, solve them as a team and work on them together as two human beings in a partnership. That's, that's just the game. That's, that's what relationships are. If you don't have that, you don't have a relationship. You have two people having feelings and trying to get feelings from the other person. That's really not a relationship. Okay. Why Yanks date without marriage in mind? This is silly. Why do Yanks date without marriage in mind? Oh, like Americans. Um, the dating pool here is very, very, very influenced by the baby boomer generation, which a lot of them had attachment issues from their broken down family systems. And then they got the automobile and they were able to travel and have dates and expand their network and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And then they broke down all kinds of barriers and all kinds of things, but then they also didn't build healthy systems. So it was just hedonism, hedonism, fun, pleasure. Oh man, it's just, it never ends. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. And then the next generation grew up in that. I was like, wow, I've never seen a healthy family because all the boomers get divorced. All my parents get divorced. Everyone gets divorced. My love must not really exist. And Generation Y and Generation X grew up hearing like, well, sometimes love just doesn't work. And sometimes people just stop loving you. And the generation, the millennial generation heard that. And then people just never heard any of this good stuff. So growing up and dating to get married is almost a new concept for people, which is pretty wild when you think about it. Cupcake Mom, I almost caught up. We're getting pushed back here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I love these questions, guys. This is awesome. Those likes are great too. Please keep those coming. Congratulate me, I broke up. Thanks to you, I actually feel free and content. Well, Cupcake Mom, I remember you talking about this before with, with a really, um, I don't want to call you out, a really unkind and manipulative avoidant person who was treating you very unkindly. I am glad you've made the right decision for you. I am glad you are free from narcissism. I'm glad you are free from that avoidance. You are now ready to be able to engage in a really loving relationship. And that's wonderful because you've worked a lot. I know you've been in a lot of my lives lately and you have learned a lot. And I love your questions. So please keep them coming. Like who you are, stop grooming. Okay. Caitlin Rodriguez, how do you break that cycle? Good question. Which cycle? <laughs> the cycle of... Um, Nobody will love me for who I am. I have to earn love and approval from other people. I have to make them happy. I have to build these feelings. That cycle right there, number one, by hearing about it. 
most people don't stop because people say, well, why don't you, why wouldn't you just stop being avoidant? Why wouldn't you just learn to be loving and, and learn to accept my love? Because they don't believe that's possible. Because those people with attachment issues, they don't believe it's possible. I believe, either they believe with an anxious style that there's something wrong with them deep down on the inside that everyone else can see, but they don't know what it is. So if there's someone sees it, they will be rejected and abandoned because they're worthless inside. So they have to make people happy just to earn approval and that's it. And they're always afraid of being called out as a fraud or they believe that something about them makes people hurtful and attack them. And that if they open up and, and connect with people, people will fail them. People will hurt them, be cruel to them and, and just crush the life out of them. And they also believe, excuse me, they also believe they have nothing to offer in relationships either. So then they stay way far back. That's the avoidance style. You fix this, number one, by even believing it's possible to have a different love, a different lifestyle, a different relationship, anything. To believe that there's different is the biggest step and it's the hardest one. And that's why so many people with avoidance style don't stop and get better because they don't believe it's possible and they run away when you tell them it is. People with anxious style are so broken down and hate themselves so much that when you tell them there's a better way to live, they're like, oh, thank God, please tell me what it is. That's why it's it's often easier to fix an anxious attachment style than an avoidance style until the avoidance style actually stops, hits like rock bottom and says, okay, this is enough. There's got to be a better way. And then you can do it. Then you can do it. Do you leave the relationship? You can fix it if both sides are willing to fix it. Willing to fix it. Pretty Pink High Heels says, love your book. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. I love hearing that with people. I, that it's useful for people, that people have got value from it. Shakira Knightley, should I stop performing then? May that's That right there is the fear. Yes, you should, but what do you replace it with? Most people with that anxious attachment style, they don't believe there's anything to replace it with because, again, they think there's something wrong with them deep down. They believe they are worthless and that all they have is performing. All they have is making other people happy. And if they stop doing that, people will say, oh, I just realized how worthless you are. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. This is crap. I'm out of here. That's the fear. That's why the people can't stop performing. That right there is why. You said missing bonding. What a bond. Remind me what I said. <laughs> what did I say? How about you tell me how to divorce? I have a guide over on my YouTube channel. Um, Adam Lane Smith, how to tell when you've been in a relationship for way too long. And red flags, it's time to end a relationship. I have that over on my YouTube channel. Like an in-depth 20, 25 minute guide over my YouTube channel. Adam Lane Smith on YouTube. There's a link in my bio. It is how to tell when it's time to end a relationship because it's, there's really no hope. I have a way to do that too. Lori, oh man, these are great questions. I don't want to miss any of them. I don't want to miss any of them. Lori, Lori E.K. Strand, you make so much sense. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm really glad. My ex was more of an adversary than a partner. Always had to win. That right there very much is an attachment style issue. It could be anxious if they're trying to defend themselves and not be the problem. It could be avoidant if they're trying to convince you that you are the problem so that you will stay submissive. Both of those though are, it's based on fighting, overcoming you and making you submit and believe they are right and that they are not the problem. Both of those are not a partnership mentality. It's an individualist mentality of them controlling you to try to get those feelings. They're not sociopaths. They're not trying to hurt you and exploit you. They are trying to get a certain kind of feeling from you and they don't know how to have a legitimate relationship human being to human being. It is being acted upon instead of acting with. So what I teach people is how to act with your partner, how to act with them. Getting divorced, I wish I had never married. Ram Tam says, I'm sorry to hear that. I know some of those relationships can do that 100%, especially when there's a tap. I, you know, I worked as a licensed marriage th therapist for so long, I never saw never saw a divorce or at least one person didn't have an attachment issue. It's research shows that about 50% of adults have an attachment issue in the United States. It's, it is that deep. So I love these likes guys. That's awesome. Just double tap the screen, keep people coming in and keep asking me these questions. These are great. Leah Longdon says me too. Worst thing I ever did marriages for the dogs. I disagree, but bad marriage with an attachment issue partner or where you both have attachment issues is a nightmare. So 100% that I understand. Blue Money says, how about men who that will be who they need to be a people pleaser? What about men that will be who they need to, to be a people pleaser? Oh, I see. 
Um, chameleons, people who give up their values and principles to please other people. People who just flicker through different faces and masks, but it's never really them. Yes, that's often, often an anxious attachment style if they're doing it to earn that approval. Um, some sociopaths do that. <laughs> But, but by and large, it's usually the anxious attachment style who is desperate to please people because they feel like they are going to die if they don't. That's what it is. The, the fear is so deep. They feel like they're going to die if they get found out and or abandoned. Lori K. Strand. So true. I don't believe someone can love me because my parents had their favorites I wasn't liked. Yep. That right there. The parents teach you. Your parents teach you. If you will be loved or not, if you can trust people or not, if you'll be acted upon or acted with. I've got four kids. Even with my my little kids, I try my best to act with them. There are times you have to grab them and like pull them out of the way of, of something dangerous, but act with. Even when I'm disciplining them, I don't punish them. I discipline to teach and explain why and explain what I'm doing. And I work with them so that they make sure their needs get met. When they come in with a crazy request, I still hear it out. And I don't, oh, that's stupid. I say, oh, man, okay, talk to me about this. Okay, well, here's why that's probably not going to work. But what we can do is talk about this in the future, because if this is something you really want, let's find a way you could get it. And we work with, work with. This is how you love your children and treat them like human beings, because they are human beings. And this is how you work with your partner. Okay, that's what you want? Okay, well, let's talk about that. How would that have to work? It doesn't have to be, yes, okay, please don't leave me. And it doesn't have to be, huh, no, screw you. Neither one is neither one is really loving. Leon says, should have just dated forever. Well, again, I'll disagree. But again, those attachment issues, I hear you. They're a nightmare. Let me look here. I almost, almost got to the end. And then there's great questions that come up with it. So I don't, I don't want to miss them, guys. This is great. Keep those likes going. And, and let's just keep going these with these questions. I love these. Natalie says, am I wasting my time talking to a guy? I don't know if he wants to be more than friends. I'm going to answer this real quick. So the three green flags when he wants to be more than that. He's clear with you about his needs and expectations. He's just clear with them. He says, hey, you know what? Here's what I'd like. And he tells you when he doesn't like something. Hey, you know what? I don't like that. I do like this. Could you do this instead? He's investing in those. So he's attentive to your needs and expectations. He's invested in the relationship and not pushing your buttons to make you happy. Hey, baby, what do you want? I'll do anything. And saturating you, oversaturating you and people pleasing. He really wants to know your needs and expectations and your boundaries. And he's like, cool, those are good boundaries. I like that you have them. Cool. Let's not violate them. He's very clear about that, but he's invested and wants to learn more about you and, and engage in that. And number three, he talks about solving problems and goals together. He starts talking about his goals with you. He starts talking about problems with you. He starts running things by you. He's investing in you that much. That's how you really know if he wants to be more than friends. And there's little tells when you're, when you're just barely dating. Those are mature men who are really looking for a relationship. If you've been talking for a while, um, I have all kinds of guides about how to tell when he's interested, but really... Men emotionally invest and will talk to you about their goals and their plans and will start talking about how you can help them in those things and how they can help you with your goals and plans. And when they are, interestingly, when they are teaching you things, when they're giving you information, I know our society is big about mansplaining. Mansplaining, let me mansplain it real quick. It is men sharing information with the other person to say, I value you and I respect you. So I'm giving you this valuable information that I think is useful to you so that you can live a better life. That's what men do with each other when they respect each other. They invest and then teach. When men do that with women, if he is explaining and teaching with you and giving you information, he is investing in you and respecting you. That's usually where that comes down. Men who don't respect you will not really explain and teach. They will try to wow you with all that they know and then try to keep you helpless. And uh, yeah, not good. But if he's investing that way, he's probably really interested. Smitten. I don't want to be in one until someone is honest because people are lying and they have to want to treat me super. I hear you. Um, you should be treating each other like human beings. You should be treating both each other like human beings. Absolutely no lies. Because that is acting upon somebody. Lying is acting upon somebody. Domestic violence is acting. It's the extreme version of acting upon somebody. But there's just, it, it, is, it can be just as destructive to lie and lie and lie and lie. Even if you think you're being kind to someone. The, yeah, acting upon someone, absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
Tammy Marie, husband lied and cheated before and during marriage until he got caught. <sighs> yep. This is why I tell guys, um, I tell people, you know, I will never be friends with a man who ever cheats on his wife, ever. Because a man who violates his principles is a man who will always violate his principles until he reaches a point where he commits to his principles more than anything else. Always check if a guy has principles, has values, if he's living to them, and if not, run away. If he is, verify it. Say like, all right, what are your principles? What are your goals in life? What's your values? What would you rather die than, than violate? Right? What's that saying? Death before dishonor? That's the kind of man that you want to turn into a husband. So, big time. User, something says, five years and no proposal, but we flow well. Yes, I hear that a lot. Almost always an attachment problem with the guy. Um, he's afraid. Guys will not date you for five years but not get married unless they have problems, usually. <laughs> healthy men won't waste that kind of time. And unhealthy men think that that time is just how it is and that a real deeper relationship is terrifying. So they're just trying to keep you hooked. But at five years, they're usually starting to be concerned because they don't know how to keep you going. It's, yeah, very, very big. I'm single 43 and I've been single for two years. I'm excited to start dating again and marry. Good. Good for you. Yeah, the 40, the dating pool in 40, there are so many people. So many people ask me all the time, like, Adam, I'm in my 40s. Am I really going to be able to? Yes. <laughs> I hear that question almost every day. So yes, yes, you will. Lori K. Strand, how do I get more intimacy with my husband? To safeguard our marriage. Great question. I've got a guide over on YouTube. Adam Lane Smith, how to bulletproof your marriage against affairs and divorce. Just type Adam Lane Smith and bulletproof into YouTube. It's like a 20-minute guide. It is building the ultimate emotional intimacy. But emotional intimacy is the key. I'm not talking about physical intimacy. I'm talking about emotional intimacy, which just so happens to be the driver for the female drive in the bedroom, is emotional intimacy. So every couple that comes in, they, the guy complains about she's not having the fun in the bedroom. That's usually why. I mean, it's always why. <laughs> it's, it's always why. Um, it's not her fault. It's the relationship that's just crushing that intimacy. And, and the relationship is making her not interested because she doesn't feel safe and secure. Plum Sherry, what about a man who has stopped caring? <sighs> Ooh. Okay. I'm going to tell you the secret real quick. Most people don't know this because it's, it's a chemical thing. Um, there is a chemical in men that makes them invest. There's a chemical in men that makes them invest. It makes them bond. It makes them connect. It is like human super glue for men. And it drives their attachment and their bonding with you through the freaking roof. And most women have never heard of it and do not know how to activate it. And that is why most women are just his fun favorite person, kind of, but not really. It's what I call the hamburger effect. You're, you're bonding with him through dopamine by making him feel good, but you are just becoming his favorite hamburger. You're not becoming his trusted teammate that he can come, he rely on and come to you for the rest of his life. I'm talking about a hormone called vasopressin, V-A-S-O-P-R-E-S-S-I-N. I have five extended guides for how to make this, this chemical happen in a man's brain. They're free over on my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of talks about it here on my TikTok channel. It is making people go nuts. Vasopressin is the hormone chemical that bonds you when two people overcome stress together. So when men in the army go and they storm the hill and they take it together and they achieve an objective and they stay friends until they're 95 years old, vasopressin. Men who achieve goals together, men who build things together, men who go through hardship together, and not just men. Men have more vasopressin receptors than women do, but a difficult childhood can shift you more into vasopressin bonding because your brain says, I live in a difficult place where no one is warm and safe and caring. I need real allies I can rely on, so I'm going to hold my trust and bonding back until someone proves themselves. Vasopressin is the, is the hormone that does that. Building that vasopressin bond with a man will make him reinvest in the relationship because his brain says, I need this woman in my life. I am not giving her up. I was wrong before. Now I want to bond with her. I want to build this intimacy. Building that from day one is huge for relationships. And when the relationship goes deep into a rut and starts causing problems, it's like, eh, this is boring. That's vasopressin bonding that needs renewal because eventually you're going to hit a big problem and he's going to need to turn to you to solve it to keep your marriage intact. So women intuitively know this when their relationship starts getting stale. It is vasopressin bonding that is going away. You need to renew the vasopressin bond. Again, I have five guides for how to do this over on my YouTube channel. I talk about it all the time. 
all the time. Vasopressin is huge, huge, huge. I see those likes going. That's awesome. Keep them coming in. But yeah, vasopressin is huge. Caitlin Rodriguez, can an anxious and avoidant relationship ever work? Yes, when they fix it together. If one of them fixes it, the relationship will detonate and spiral off because that one person will stop playing the game. Um, if the avoidant person fixes it, the anxious person usually will then start fixing it just to please them and then we'll start getting better. Um, if the anxious person fixes it and the avoidant person refuses, it will blow up the relationship. It can work if you fix the attachment issues together. And then you do that vasopressin bonding like I just talked about because you are solving a problem together. So I will talk more about that. If you guys start dropping questions, talk about vasopressin. I could talk about that for hours and hours and hours. Lorelei says the, chame the chameleon type sounds borderline. -y. Um, it can, it can be, and and it is one major outgrowth of it. Can be borderline personality disorder, but even just even just anxious attachment style can do that. Anjay says, sorry, off topic. Any advice for someone with disorganized attachment struggling with relationships? Yes. So disorganized is also called anxious avoidant. It is avoidant until you get bonded to someone and then very anxious and nervous and then somewhat controlling sometimes, not always, but very, very standoffish until you just can't let it go. And then sometimes it's hot and cold and hot and cold. And it is even just knowing you have a disorganized attachment style, fix it, fix it. I have a book that will help you fix it. It's $5, Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith. It's on, on Amazon. Uh, there's a link in my bio. Five bucks and 100 pages. It's built to be read in one night or in a weekend. And you read it and you go through it very quick. If you want to read it with your partner, read the audiobook together with a partner. Um, it's huge. Spirited Healer Laura, what is intimacy? So different types, but it is an open bondedness between two human beings. It is two human beings having a cooperative relationship that is transparent and built on mutual fulfillment. That's what it is with full informed consent on both sides of what is happening. That is intimacy so that you can discuss anything, you can go through anything, you can resolve anything, you can build a relationship that's fulfilling for both and neither one is a hostage and neither one has to remain silent or perform in order for the relationship to keep going. And that can build into the emotional intimacy which is really the backbone of a relationship. Brittany XB, hey, here you are again. Good to see you. Wow, I sat here saying I'm a chameleon and you said sociopath. Yeah, that's again, the extreme version of it. A sociopath will do it. I, I don't think, Brittany, from everything you've said, I don't think you're a sociopath. If you were, you wouldn't be in here being worried that you were a sociopath. <laughs> Sociopaths don't worry about that. Um, but that's the extreme version. A lot of these attachment behaviors lead to the extreme ones. Attachment issues can lead to the extreme personality issues. Not down the road. I mean, it's not just, it doesn't just slide you in that direction. But the severe versions are the personality issues. And that, in psychology, that people say, why haven't I heard about this before? Because in psychology, they teach most of us in graduate school, if they don't have a personality issue, they don't have attachment issues, so don't bother checking for them. That's what they teach in graduate school. So another reason I resigned my license as a therapist, so I could coach instead. So here I am. I was becoming exploitative. I wasn't in the mood once. And he tried to guilt trip me. Oh, yeah. I feel like I missed something in an earlier comment. That's the first one I'm seeing of yours. It was becoming exploitative. I wasn't in the mood. He tried to guilt trip me. Yes, acting upon you acting upon you instead of acting with you and saying, I just need to push the right buttons and she will spit out a romantic evening. I just have to push the right buttons and she will suddenly be turned on. Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Natalie Harrell says, we just speak about our music taste. We're musicians. We haven't ventured in deeper conversation. You know what? I tell people this. Talk about things that could break you up. Bring things up that could break you up. Bring things up that could break you up. Have those conversations because if your relationship can explode then know that early. And you know what? Most people, healthy people will be like, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad, let's talk about that. And you talk about it because if you're going to get married and have a loving bond for the rest of your life, that you're building something together and being a partnership, a teamwork, with teamwork, you, you cannot have landmines that will explode you. So have those conversations. Honestly, don't be afraid to break up. Don't be afraid to break up because it's better to know now. Ferrum Libra, how do you stop comparing everyone to your narcissistic ex? I'm anxious style. Good question. Learn the red flags about what avoidant people are doing. So narcissist really is short word for, uh, it's long word actually, for avoidant, avoidant attachment style. If you see narcissist, 
it's almost never narcissistic personality disorder that's an extreme. It's usually an avoidant attachment style is usually what that is of they are afraid to get hurt. They're afraid of being pinned down. They are afraid that they don't have what it takes to even fulfill a relationship, but they're also afraid people will hurt them. So they love you and bomb you enough, just enough to keep you connected and then back off. And it's all about preserving and protecting them. That's usually where that's at. Um, and they become really toxic and hurtful when they have any kind of power and leverage over you because then they just think that they own you and you, they have, they can order you to do stuff and push your buttons that way instead of pushing your buttons with love. It's very hurtful. Very, very hurtful. Learn the red flags and learn what, how to identify healthy people and you don't have to be afraid anymore. And fix your own attachment style. You will become so repellent to those people. So repellent. When you have an anxious style, you're like catnip to those people. They're like, aha, you have all the markers of someone who will just stay with me forever but will never actually try to push me. So perfect. Yeah. Learn the learn healthy attachment. My book will do that. My book, it's, there's a link in my bio. Slaying Your Fear. Natalie Searle. We, um, oh, we already did that one. Well, we share songs, have a playlist together. We've only seen each other three times. Is it just too early to tell? No, no, it's not. You need to be having really serious conversations. It is never too early to have serious conversations. I encourage people on the first date to have serious conversations. And I don't mean let's get married today. I mean, hey, just to check that we're on the same page. What are you looking for long term? I would like to get married. I'd like to get married and I'd like to have some kids. Just so we're on the same page. Is that eventually what you're looking for too? Or are you looking for just fun? If so, no harm, no foul. Let's go, let's shake hands and go our separate ways. It can be that simple on the first date. Anna Crumpler, my boyfriend and I have talked a lot about a ring that's overwhelming for him to act on it. Why is it overwhelming for him to act upon it? I ask that because, yes, marriage is a big thing, but marriage is a committed partnership where the two of you are building something together and you engage in total emotional intimacy so that you are bonded as a couple and you work on this goal together for the rest of your life and support each other. That is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Why is he afraid? Why is he afraid? Does he think he can't follow through on it? Is he avoidant where he thinks that it will never work and that love does not really exist? Have a serious, serious conversation because it, it should not be that way. It should not be that way. Jay Kulba, how to get to man to go to therapy? Ooh, very hard, very hard. Men don't usually go to therapy because therapy validates your feelings and men don't get better when their feelings are validated. Men get better when they have solutions, which is why I coach. I teach people solutions instead of validating feelings endlessly for five years. That's what men usually avoid with therapy is, is just endless validations of feelings. That's what they perceive and that's often what they find. So give them solutions instead. Get them coach instead of a therapist sometimes. The world is ending less than 10 years. Okay, well, thanks. Good time to fix your attachment. Kylia does your mom. Well, that's a Kyle does your mom. Okay. Is getting married to a guy after dating him for six months bad? I've known him for four years. No. Um, let me tell you when it's good and when it's bad. So I met my wife and within two weeks we were engaged and we got married at 11 months and we just had our 13 year wedding anniversary and four kids together. And most people I know who have successful marriages, most get married fairly fast, fairly. You must have those intense conversations. You must lay everything on the table and build it and talk about those goals and talk about those pieces. You absolutely must. And when they align perfectly, then it's time. You check for green flags. You watch if that person lives to their principles. You watch if they lie. You watch how they handle mistakes. You watch how they handle stressful periods, how they act toward people who are inconvenient to them. And then you commit. But you commit because they can work with you instead of acting upon you. Never, never, never commit to someone who acts upon you or acts upon anyone else. I dated uh, Sedona Dream. I dated my husband for six years before I married him. He came from divorced parents, was scared. Yes, you know what? Came from divorced parents, was scared. That's an attachment style. That's an attachment piece is what that is. Plum Sherry says, thanks. Absolutely. Can you be in a healthy relationship with a narcissist? Uh, it is really, really tough. It can be healthy, it can look healthy until they get the upper hand. It can look healthy until they get the upper hand. Um, airboat, when my husband gets aggravated, he takes it on me. That is acting upon someone. That is usually an attachment style over and over and over and believing they can't just work with you. Um, for some reason, he is hurting the one person on earth he should be working with instead of, work, instead of working with you to solve his problems. He is venting his anger upon you. Um, very unfortunately common in broken, really broken attachment style. Very common. Very, very, very common. 
airboat never used to be this way. Okay, so often what can happen is the fast suppression bonds can get really weak and that man can um, revert back to some attachment issues if he had them. It usually does, doesn't come out of nowhere. But when you've done the vast suppression bonding right and you guys have overcome challenges together, his brain likes you and wants to work with you. But then down the line, he can start feeling helpless and hopeless in, in situations. So he won't bring problems with you and he doesn't believe he can solve them at all, even with you. So big piece. Honestly, restoring his ability to work with you and trust you, number one, instead of acting upon you. And number two, restoring those beliefs that he can solve his problems at all and that the two of you can do it together. And then rebuilding those vast suppression bonds that should be there in the first place, that can, that can help. I can help big time. It's not like, hey, just bail out of the relationship. No, there's usually a problem. Um, and men usually do that when they are depressed. Men don't do that when they're happy. And male depression, I've talked about this a lot. Male depression comes from two places. Number one, um, feeling powerless. And number two, feeling like they are never going to get that power control back ever. So powerless, by the way, to end their pain and or powerless to achieve a mission. So if they have no, part, no point in life or they believe that they're helpless... Really bad. Really, really, really bad. Mad Vicky, how come intimacy dies in the relationship? So it doesn't really die. It was never really there. If you're talking about physical intimacy, that's because the female drive is built on emotional intimacy. It is built to be high in the beginning and then after six to seven months, maybe a year, and then go into emotional intimacy to see if she should actually stay here and get pregnant with this man. And if if the emotional bonding is high, he's open, he's connected, he's secure, he helps her feel secure, that bond is tight and, and warm and loving, her drive goes like through the roof and he's fighting her off with a stick. If his bond is, bonding is low and he's not working with her, he's just like, hey, babe, don't worry about it and won't solve problems with her, doesn't open up to her, doesn't connect with her, won't share needs, doesn't care about her needs. If she is just a pretty body to him, warm intimacy goes away. Anna Crumpler, how do I know vasopressin is present? Ooh, good question. Um, he will be invested, very invested. He'll be bringing problems to you and talking with you about them, not like to solve them for him, but to get your input on things. He will be looking forward to solving more problems with you. Men who build vasopressin bonds together will come to each other for more solving and more problems because their brain's like, all right, now you're an ally. We can solve these together, so... Monica, I'm anxious. My husband was fearful, avoidant. What a challenge. That's a huge problem. Huge, huge, huge. Diane, my, that's my ex to a T. I hear you 100%. How to make someone commit who is shy. Tips. So what kind of shy? What kind of shy? Super anxious, attachment style shy? Fix the attachment. Work with them on what you want. Huge piece. Oh man, I got all kinds of questions just popped up. Let me do some of these. Let me do some of these. Man, this is good stuff. Guys, thank you so much. Keep dropping those likes. Just double tap the screen. That's going to keep this coming. There, uh, let me see. Anna Crumpler, I think engagement's overwhelming because he's been preached at that marriage is important and scary. So he has been taught that a loving, bonding, cooperative relationship of full emotional intimacy. Those likes are awesome, guys. A loving, cooperative relationship of full emotional intimacy where you work together to solve problems and can trust each other and, and work together on goals for the rest of your life is scary. Think about that for a moment. That's his attachment. That's his attachment. What is attachment? It's the, it's the belief that two people can form a mutually fulfilling circle that is not based on exploitation. It's based on taking care of each other with openness and trust and intimacy. That's what attachment is. It's knowing that you can give and receive love safely with another human being. It sounds like he doesn't have that. A lot of men don't. And that's why a lot of men don't commit. Taylor is annoying. You're back. Good to see you. And you're never annoying. You always have good questions. Hey, Adam, I was in a few of your lives. Me and my best friend are now dating. He's going amazing. That's awesome. I remember you saying like, hey, my, my, my best friend, he's this guy. And I think he's interested, but I'm not sure. You're living it. You're, you're living the dream. Everybody, like the dude made it out of the friend zone. Like awesome. And thank you, Taylor. You you are a legend. You should be posting that all over the internet. Give, give guys some hope. Annette Gabriel, hey, my crush Nicholas and I have been having intimate conversations since November. We've had serious conversations, but he has moved from Canada to Dubai and has not made an effort to meet. Ooh, okay. Um, well, what is he working on? Either he is working on himself and building a business, so he's not engaged in like romance right now, or he is working on playing the field with a bunch of women, and that is a whole other thing. 
So you need to be talking to him about that. What is he working on and how can you support him in it? And does he even want your help? If he wants your help, that is a good sign. If he's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. I don't need your help. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. And that would mean probably move on, to be honest with you. Um, what step are we on, Brittany? Ooh, good question. You know what? We have 15 minutes left. All right, let me blast through these real quick. These questions are amazing, but I don't want to miss this. How to turn your boyfriend into a husband. Number one, check your attachment. We've talked about that a ton. On your side and his side. My book, Slaying Your Fear, will show you how to do that. Number two, talk about needs right now. Are your needs being fulfilled in the relationship? Or are you just being this to please him? And are you hoping you will get a ring eventually? Where are your needs? How, do he, how seriously does he take them? Not is he a hostage to them? Not is he super duper in them to please you? Is he fulfilling them like a loving partner should? And, and both of your needs. Where are both of your needs? Number three, make sure your goals align. What does he want in life? What do you want in life? Do both of you want commitment and marriage and kids and a house and whatever it might be? Talk about those things. If you haven't talked about them yet, talk about them now. Number four, what is the holdup? Why are you okay with waiting? A lot of people, a lot of women, they don't know how men work. They're just like, well, I'm just going to wait. I don't know. Like a lot of women come to this because they have no idea how to make a man connect to them or commit to them. They're like, I don't know. I guess I just wait for like six years and eventually he'll just throw a ring at me when he wants to catch me like a Pokemon. Not quite. (laughs) Not quite. You must talk to him and make sure those goals align. And why are you okay waiting, 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 waiting? Do you just not know any better? Or is there an attachment issue on your side that's keeping you people-pleasing and endlessly on that loop? What is it? Fix that. Number five, I have it written down right over here. Set the expectation today. Don't waste years. I don't mean you have to go home and say, all right, this is it. We are getting married or else. No, you don't have to do that. But set the expectation. I want to get married. I really want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to get married within a year, if possible. Can we please work on this? Is this something, what would it take for the two of us to be able to get married within a year? And this is what I really want. You don't have to say or else. You can just talk about that and work on that together. But if he's like, I don't know, a year is, we've been dating, we've only been dating for five years, another year, oh, that's too, okay, why? Have a conversation. Keep asking questions. Do not go silent. Don't just make him happy because you will waste another five years and then you will say, why did I waste 10 years? That's one of the biggest regrets I hear from women is not, hey, I pushed him too soon and he left me because he, no, 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 no. I've, I've almost never heard a woman say that. What I usually hear is I waited five years and then he broke up with me because I wanted more. Don't waste it. Do not waste it. Do not waste it. Green flags when it's time for you to commit. Again, he's clear about his needs and expectations, not demanding, but he's very clear about them. And you know exactly what he wants in a relationship in a good way. He's very attentive to your needs and expectations. He's deep invested in it without being overly approval seeking or love bombing you. He's just like matter of fact, taking care of your needs and his needs. And number three, he's talking about solving problems together and building that teamwork together, building goals, building plans, doing that with you. Those are great signs he's invested. And then it's probably time for you to commit too. Boom, all five of them plus the green flags right there. Let's get back to these questions because these are great. And those likes are awesome, guys. Please keep those rolling. Brittany XB, thanks for reminding me. (laughs) I want to get those out. These questions are great, but every time I get sidetracked by doing these because they're just here. Luvia lover, divorced once, engaged to another, didn't work out. Now I don't know how to figure out what I want. Really good question. Really good question. You know, a number of ways, a number of ways. What do you want your life to look like over the next 40, 50 years? (laughs) Who Who do you want to be in your life? What kind of life do you want to live? Who do you want to be close to? Do you want a partnership? Are you just scared off and burned from a couple really bad experiences? Um, there's a number of ways to figure this out. It's checking your needs. I've got YouTube guides for that. I also do coaching one-on-one. If it's just too much to figure out all at once, click my bio, click the link tree, click coaching, consultations in there. I will work with you one-on-one and help you figure out those needs. It does not take long to do that. I can show you exactly what you've actually been wanting and been afraid to ask for. So, Anik, Gabriel, I wonder how long we'll be in this friendship intimacy building before we can make a commitment. Yeah, like I just said, man, doesn't happen. Um, does not happen. Guys who are really healthy and committed, honestly, they go in and they're like, no, I want to get married, but I want to see what you do for like the next year. That's really what it usually is. Longer than a year, like four years, five years, there's almost almost always one attachment issue on one side. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or that people are bad for doing it, just letting know. Um 
Gladiator Goddess. Any tips on getting an X back? And Taylor says, don't do it. You know what? I tell people this. There's a reason they're an X. Usually it's because either they violated their principles over and over and over, or you violated your principles over and over and over. There's a reason that they were okay with it for so long. There's a reason you were okay with it for so long. Fix your principles. Fix who you want to be. Be that person. And then see if that X actually enhances your values and principles or if they will want you to keep violating your principles and values just to be able to be with them. That is the step one before you even think about getting back with them. Is your mom, what if he says he's affectionate but then he isn't affectionate? Like you need, have that quest, have that talk. Like, hey, you know what? Here's what's really important to me. If you do these things, this would be amazing. See what he does. Healthy men who are attached are like, yeah, that's great. Gladiator goddess, I still feel a strong connection to him in my heart. I can't get over him. Okay, when you have a rough childhood, you don't get much oxytocin. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone that happens with warmth, care, safety, nurturing. A lot of guys with avoidant attachment issues love bomb you to give you oxytocin. And when you have attachment issues and anxiety, you are like, whoa, I've never got this from anyone. This feels amazing. This is incredible. And your brain says, this is the only person on earth who can ever give me this good feeling. I need this person. And they become like a drug. And then they pull back and they withdraw. And they're like, no, nah, I'm out. I don't know about this. I don't know. And they keep pulling away. And that's how they keep you going, 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 going. It's the little carrot they dangle in front of you to make you keep running. And when you break up, your brain says, nobody else on earth will ever give me the oxytocin bonding that person did. I am stuck. I am hopeless. I have to be with them. I will do anything to be with them. That's what the brain is doing. You must heal, heal your attachment and build oxytocin and vasopressin bonds with the people you love and get a flow of serotonin from those healthy people, being in relationships with them. You must build healthy relationships with your friends and family and get those healthy chemicals you should be getting from them so that you are not desperate for the one and only person that your brain thinks can ever provide you with those feelings. Huge, huge, huge. Depressed men don't seek marriage typically. Oh, hits couponing with Kells. Um, depressed men don't seek marriage typically. They do. They can. Some depressed men can. Um, but they feel hopeless and helpless, so they will believe they don't have much to offer or provide in that marriage. So it's tough. They often, they can't avoid marriage, but they will want it. They are the ones who want it, but drag their feet pretty hard too. They're the ones that are really confusing and just like very unhappy. So women feel sorry for them. It's not a good situation. Taylor's annoying. I know, girl, I've been there. Trust me. X's are X's for a reason. Yeah, it's... It's... Yeah. I, I need this lives video, please. I hear you. I'm here every week. <laughs> yeah, I've got like eight minutes left. I am here four times a week, guys. Four times a week. Monday, 7 a.m. right now. What time is this? No, Monday, this, this hour. Um, Tuesday, 7, 7 p.m. I mean, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, Monday and Tuesday. 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, I am here 11 a.m. U.S. Central Time. I am here four times a week. I've also got my full, full YouTube library, which is free. So if this has been great, I've got my full YouTube library. All of this, though, rolls into my, my Discord community that I have in my bio. Click there. It says community. Um, click on my bio. Click the link tree, community. My Discord group, I am in there all the time. We have live events. I have live teachings. We have Q&As. People DM me questions. I have all kinds of stuff. So if you're just looking for help, you're looking to immerse yourself in a group of people that will keep you accountable, you want to talk to people who know what you're going through with attachment, that's what my community is all about. I have built my community to be an extreme version of what we're doing here tonight. So if this is good, click my bio, click the link tree, jump in there and check out my community. All right, let me let me roll through some of these questions. He definitely loved bombed me. Gladiator God, I said I had a rough childhood. Boom. Before him, I was in abusive relationships. I'm so scared. Okay, five, I have something that will cost you five bucks that will change your life. My book, Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith. Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith is on Amazon. It will change your life. You are probably going to cry while you read it. It is The, the Kindle version is on Amazon, $5. It will, it's the price of a fast food burger. Slaying Your Fear by, by Adam Lane Smith. It will teach you what you are doing wrong. It will teach you why. It will teach you why abusive people seek you out. It will teach you why people don't commit to you and why you are afraid to fully commit to them. It will teach you why you are okay with people mistreating you and why you think you secretly deserve it. And it will show you how to overcome all of that, how to build healthy relationships, how to build connection with human beings, and how to build trusting relations and intimate relations for the rest of your life to build the marriage you've always wanted. That will show you how to overcome all of that. 
So, Lightworker Tarot says, Adam's YouTube videos are great. Thank you. I think I've seen you over there leaving comments, I think, if that's been you. So, thank you. Yeah. Very cool. I have so many great questions on here, and I will not have time for all of them. I apologize, guys. These are great. Again, my Discord community is huge, 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 and I'm on, like, every platform. Gladiator Goddess, thank you, Adam. I appreciate this 100%. 100%. It can. This problem can be fixed. You can live a fulfilling, wonderful, warm life and have a great marriage and raise healthy kids. You can do it. If you remember nothing else for tonight, everybody, please, attachment can be fixed. It is not impossible. You are not stuck for the rest of your life. This can be fixed and healed. You can live a wonderful life without these problems ever again. And it's not years and years and years. I'm talking like weeks, weeks, maybe months if you drag your feet. But I've seen people turn their whole life around in just a couple of weeks. So let me go back. What book Jojo, uh, Jojo says? Adam Lane Smith, Slaying Your Fear. So Adam Lane Smith, L-A-N-E. There's a link in my bio. Click link tree and then it'll say like book or I think it says Slaying Your Fear. And click on that. It's like a black book with a snake having its head chopped off very manly. Um, no other psychology books are that manly. And it makes men want to read it. So hey, don't, don't, don't kill me for that. Um, read that book. It's five bucks for the Kindle version. I think it's 10 bucks for the paperback version and, and it shifts your house really fast. 100 pages. It is not a textbook where you have to read it and read like for weeks before you can... No, 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 no. It's meant to be sat and read in, a, in an evening or in a weekend and blast through it and have all the answers. All the answers right there. So, big time. Caitlin Rodriguez says, thank you so much. I keep missing the answer to my question. Museum clarinet. I haven't... Um, let me look. I don't want to miss anything, guys. I don't want to miss anything. I'm just, we're rolling back through. We got so much going on. Glad you guys. It's crazy how you bring up my upreading and last relationship with that statement. Yeah, it's, unfortunately, it's a, it's a pattern. It is a pattern. It is a pattern. You say, you said it's exactly what happened. Yes. Um, I'm focusing on my, on myself, but missing him. Yeah, you got to fix that. The book will help you. How do I tell my friend that I want to be more than friends? Ooh, museum clarinet. You know what? Museum clarinet. How do I tell my friend I want to be more than friends? Talk to Taylor is annoying, who just had that exact same relationship blow up into a healthy one. Brittany XP sent a rose. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Um, Gladiator Goddess will get the book. It, it will help. Come back and let me know how it went. I want to hear because it's huge. Taylor is annoying. Um, Taylor, what did I tell you? Go up and just say, hey, you know what? Have you ever thought about us being together? Has that ever been a thought that's ever crossed your mind? How's that ever been? Brittany, be a, a little arrow. Ah, that's cool. Thank you very much. I promise. Yeah, come back and let me know. I love hearing how people work with the book and start getting better. That love arrow was crazy. Uh, my kids were just watching Robin Hood the other day, so that worked out perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. That's exactly what I said. It went so great. Yeah, you just go up and you just say, um, museum. I think your name was museum. You just go up and say, hey, have you ever thought about us being together? Has that ever crossed your mind? And if they say, no, no, that's no, no. Well, then, okay. They probably, if, if they're lying, <laughs> then, okay, stop that anyway. And maybe they'll come back later. And if they really haven't, then, oh, okay, cool. I've just, have you ever thought about it? I've just ever, I've just ever thought about it. If it was curious, if it was something useful. Unfortunately, you missed my questions. What is the attachment issue? Thanks. Sedona Dream, what is an attachment issue? So an attachment issue is the way that you give and receive love with someone else. It gets broken in childhood where you don't believe it's possible and you don't believe that you can give and receive love openly with other human beings. Oh, Blue Moni sends gifts. Thank you. And I saw that you did that earlier too. Thank you. I meant to say thank you, but it flashed by so fast. That was very kind. Thank you. Um, attachment is the way you give and receive love. And if your parents did not teach you to give and receive love cooperatively with other human beings, you won't know how, and you won't believe that you deserve love. And you will think, in fact, that you don't deserve it and that you have to act upon other people to get your needs met instead of acting with them. Instead of saying in a relationship to your girlfriend or your wife, you know what, this is really bothering me. Could we please work on this together? You will say, hmm, well, you know, there's something that's been bothering me and I don't know what do you want to do about it, but here's the thought. Or you won't even bring that up. You'll just start pushing her buttons and trying to make her guess what you want. Or you'll be mean to her and make her figure out why you're mad. A lot of the, well, you should know why I'm mad if you really love me. A lot of that is attachment issues. It's acting upon someone instead of acting with someone. It's the belief that you can't even act with somebody. You have to act upon them and keep yourself safe from them at the same time. 
Lei Lu says, detachment is my lung language. Don't suggest it. Yeah, I would not suggest detachment. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest broken attachment. It's a lifetime of pain. It's a lifetime of loneliness and sadness. And it comes at the end of, why did I do this? Why couldn't I have loved? It's really rough. You can fix it, though. 100%. Tiny stand-up chick. My boyfriend doesn't believe in marriage. I'm trying to show him I'd be a good wife, but I, gee, I'm out of luck. Yep. Um, why would someone not believe in a deep, fulfilling partnership where you are open and intimate with each other, where you solve problems together, and where you trust each other truly with your most valuable assets because you believe the other person will always act with your best interests? Why would you be against that? It's because you don't believe it's possible. That's an attachment thing. Brittany, gonna check out your Discord. Awesome, thank you. I would love to see you in there. We have huge talks. We're gonna have a big group talk tomorrow. Um, our last group talk on Saturday, what was that about? It was all about, oh, I remember what it was about. It was all about building intimate relationships and projecting real confidence instead of fake confidence and how not to let people push your buttons and how to build intimate relationships where you are really fulfilled and really confident and secure and then how to engage in those relationships fully. And some of the people in there had never felt that before. So we dove into that. Then we talked about dating practices. And the men and women went back and forth. Like, would, would a woman think this was weird to hear? Would a man think this was weird to hear? And the, both sides were like, no, that would be great. And both sides at the end were just like their jaws were hanging open because they got raw data from each other about what men, healthy men and women really want on a first date. And it blew their freaking minds. Yeah, they, they had no idea. No idea. Is your book for, Letty says, is your book for both men and women? Yes, 100% for both men and women. Yeah, it's it's not just for one or the other. It's not. Um, so Donna Dream, thank you so much. I'm buying your book. Happily Married, that attachment issue is ringing true. I hear you. Very much hear you. Um, thank you for buying the book. Thank you, everybody, for buying the book. That's helpful. Feeds my kids. Um, but... <laughs> It is also helpful because it will show you exactly what to do. Step by step, no step missed. It will show you what's going wrong and why and how to fix it. Key steps to start fixing it. It's not like, hey, you can solve this with another payment of nine ninety. No, 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 no. A fully contained system that teaches you how to fix it to the point that clinicians around the United States and in Canada are using it to treat, they're using it as a guide to treat their patients now with attachment issues because I'm spreading the word about it and the word's getting out. So... People are using it, clinicians and healthcare workers are using it to help patients because it's a walkthrough guide that is that simple. It's 100 pages. It is built to just roll through super fast and get to the fixing without reading a textbook. So it's all in there. Discord group is there. Hi guys, I got to get going. It's 8.02. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Check out my link in my bio. Um, it's in the link tree and then the community. Check out my Discord. If this has been helpful, a far more concentrated version of this. We do it all the time in my Discord group. It's constant ongoing like this, seven days a week, and then super concentrated versions of this a few times a week where we do in-depth dives. So I'd love to have you guys in there. Those conversations are going right now. If attachment is your language, we speak it. It'd be great to have you there. Thank you, guys. Letty says, brought your book. Thank you. Thank you, Sedona. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, everybody. I, I can't even say everybody in here because there's so many of you in here. This is great. Thank you so much, guys. Please come back tomorrow night in 23 hours, U.S. Central Time, tomorrow, 7 p.m. I will be here at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, U.S. Central Time. Another free hour of education, another conversation, all these questions. I'm doing all this Gladiator, guys. I'm buying it after the live ends. Good. Slaying Your Fear by Adam Lane Smith. Slaying Your Fear. It's a black book with a snake jumping the head off. It's in my link tree. It's in my bio. So I'm here. I'll be here tomorrow. More free education. I'm just here to help. Thank you guys so much for coming by. I'll see you tomorrow.